27, 28. If you have it, go ahead and read it. And it came to pass that he spake these things. A certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee, and the tax which thou hast suffered. But he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. A woman came to Jesus one day and said that his mother was blessed. And what did Jesus say? He said, Blessed are they that believe. He took the focus off of her and replaced it. Why? Because Jesus is the only one that rece should receive our worship. And when I say Jesus, of course, God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. No angel, no mother, no father, no brother, no animal, but all worship, and worship belongs to God and God alone. Well, the Pope himself thinks that as being a, a head of God, that as a Pope in that he, he is before God, and then God is before his birth. Mm -hmm. Yes. But what does the Word of God? It rebukes that idea. It rebukes that notion. And when it comes to worship, God is very clear that He alone deserves the worship. What does Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 states? Very first commandment. That's the New Testament version. That's the New Testament version. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I mean, if you want to, if someone has, go ahead and read Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Then we're all on the same page. Exodus 20 and verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So God is very clear. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So he said we can have one God with him. We can worship his. No. <coughs> he said we can have none. We can have no other gods to worship. It's him and him alone. <coughs> and when we look at individuals who worship anything, anything or anyone other than God, we refer to it as idolatry. And we've already said that right off the bat in the first Ten Commandments, the number, the first two commandments right off the bat, God's coming right out of the gate and laying it right out there that you shouldn't worship anything else or anyone else but me. And then he takes it a little bit farther and goes, that even includes if you make an idol. That even includes if you fashion something. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but you can't fashion anything from anything on the earth and heaven above. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Nothing. I'm the only one that deserves worship. It all comes to me. And he referred to those who worship anything else other, or anyone else other than God as idolaters. And what does the Bible state concerning idolaters in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8? Revelation 21, 8 and 1 John 5, 21. Revelation 21, 8 or someone else, 1 John 5 and 21. So where do idolaters go? The lake of fire. And they're right in list among whoremongers and that other long list of people. But they shall have their part in the lake of fire. Which is the second death. How about 1 John 5 and 21? 1 John 5 and 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So, once again, Keep yourself from idols. Stay away from them. And Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5 states, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children 
unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So not only does God say, don't do it, not only does he state that uh, anyone who worships idols will be cast into the lake of fire, but he said that judgment will be upon the third and fourth generations of them that do so. He is a jealous God, and he makes it too very clear that he alone is worthy of worship. We will conclude here for today and pick up again next week. Does anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to add at this point? There's a lot of physical There it is. I think out of all the religions, I think that's one of the most, one that has the most physical, actual physical things that they have throughout the church and everywhere else. I believe that I can see that, especially when you get into the worship of the relics, how much they revere them. I mean, even to the point of trying to track down pieces and relics. Uh, now it's been a long time, I'm going to have it backwards, I'm sure. But there's a Notre Dame Cathedral that every Easter they believe that they have a part of the cross or the crown of thorns from Christ. No, actually, part of the cross. Part of the cross. Part of the cross. I think there's another cathedral in Paris that actually has the crown of thorns, or supposedly has it. How they bring it? Yes. Uh, the other thing we can say about uh, with the idols and stuff that I just, uh, I'm actually in uh, Bible college right now and stuff. And uh, one of our discussions was uh, that it's not just the Catholic that makes the idols out of uh, things, but it's also uh, uh, regular people because like when we're wearing a cross, uh, whether it just be a regular cross, if you're putting a cross over Jesus and stuff, you're worshiping the cross. Uh, that was actually in a discussion on that we're making a cross higher up than what Jesus is. And yeah, stuff, uh, yeah. Anything can be an idol. Doesn't matter what it is. Anyone else? If not, let's bow our heads and prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Now, even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be plowed, that they will be good soil for your word to follow, Lord, that we may remember it throughout the week, Lord. But even greater than that, that it will take root in our heart, that we may be transformed into your very image, even farther. We pray, Lord, that you anoint the song leader and the musicians as they lead us in the songs you have us to sing, Lord, as they praise you upon the string instruments and the vocal cords, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you anoint the pastor's mind and his lips to bring forth your message, Lord, to bring forth the words that you'd have us to hear, Lord. And may we grab all into it, Lord, and apply them to our lives. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. <coughs>